mean, I have synchronicities all the time. I mean, every day, every hour. You know, I if I thought about it and wrote them down, they're all there because what they are is, okay, it's an a causal connecting principle, right? So it's not this cause this, it's when this doesn't cause this. When my psyche is set up in a certain way to notice that that happened, right? That's what it is. It's your psyche noticing that X happened, like you were talking about. Um, does it notice or does it create the happening? No, because that would be a causal connecting principle. Oh, okay. A synchronicity is an a-causal connecting principle, right? So it's not directly causing it, but because your mind is in a certain condition, it sees it. It sees the connection, right? Right. All right. And my perception has really increased the number of synchronicities I've seen since I've been talking about these things. De developing this knowledge. Right. And it's bizarre because... But that, that is what happens because when you focus on something, then it comes alive. It happens. Okay. So is this, um, is this a positive thing in terms of um, developing the connection between the unconscious? Is this actually exercising the connection between the unconscious and the conscious? Surely, because it, it starts to help you understand how your unconscious can help you. And, you know, because maybe the, may, maybe the synchronicity is going to fool you into thinking that this is a good way to go. You, you have a synchronicity and you say, yeah, man, I'm going to do that. <laughs> and, and, and then your psyche, you know, your psyche saw the synchronicity, but then your psyche, psyche sends you a dream or a vision and says, maybe this isn't such a good idea, John. You know, <laughs> it might not be such a good idea. <laughs> and, and then you can apply your conscious mind to it. Because mind you, the unconscious is instinctual. The archetypal world is instinctual. Okay, so that's the two million year old man. Okay, you're, you're from vintage 1953. Right, and so vintage 1953 hasn't changed since 1953. It's what was what was built in at that time was there already, at that time. All right, and so you have an instincts from that time, but it but that part of you doesn't know anything about the life you're living today in 2016, right? And so you have to apply your conscious mind to what your psyche is telling you. Okay, the two million year old man, the instinctual self, is telling you something, and you have, you as the conscious man, have to deal with that and decide what's right and what's not right, and what's going to make you happy, and what isn't. Okay, so it's, a, it's kind of a way of stepping back. Esther Harding talked about it in Psychic Energy, where she was talking about Buddhists, and the first layer is karma. You're taught that, you know, for every action there's a counteraction, and so if you do bad things, you're going to have bad things happen to you in the future. I, I used to say karma is what goes around and comes around, right? And so this is, this is the way children are taught, you know? Johnny, if you do this, this is going to happen. And Johnny doesn't know whether that's true or not. So if you touch the stove, it's going to burn you. He's saying, ah, oh, okay. He touched it. Ah. <laughs> it's that Larry in psychology. It connects the two, right? Right. That, now, now I know now what hot means. means. Now I know what hot means, right? Okay, so that's a kind of karma. But, but then when you get past that infantile way of dealing with the world, then you get into the duality thing. And if you're smart, you learn that there's a, a give and take, and for every action, there's a reaction. And that's basically what Jungian psychology says. For every action, there's going to be a reaction. And so 
yes, we had the result of the election of 2016, but oh, by the way, there's going to be a reaction to that. So you're talking on the conscious level now. On the conscious level, yeah. So what's the unconscious doing while all this is going on, as far as making decisions? Well, the un unconscious may be, may be warning you to ameliorate your, um, you know, your results. So, you know, you you decide you are going to do something, but you haven't done it yet, and your your unconscious sends you a dream that scares the death out of you, and then then you say, hmm, maybe I shouldn't do that after all, right? Because your unconscious you have to relate it to where you are in your conscious life. Right, right. So it's sending you a message, and it's a message based on two million years of instinct or four million years of instinct. It's actually more like four million years, I think, today we say. It's never wrong? No, it's instinctual. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not that it's never wrong, okay? An instinct might tell you, it tells you to either fight or flight, right? But just because it tells you to fight doesn't mean you're gonna survive. Right. <laughs> so what good is it if it gives you, you a know, false if it gives you a false signal? Well, um, because it it may not perceive why you shouldn't. Okay, you haven't perceived why you shouldn't. You know, just because you see a guy and he's attacking you and you don't have any choice but to fight doesn't mean that he doesn't have ten guys out of your range of vision that if you're fighting him, they're gonna come in and stab you. You know, that sort of thing. And and so... But your unconscious is telling you to fight in this Yeah, I mean, case, right? yeah, because maybe you don't have any choice. Maybe, uh, you know, you're weaker or you're slower than somebody. And, and you know, David and Goliath type thing, you know, David, um, David could fight, everybody else was afraid to fight. And David could fight because he knew that, that Goliath was blind. Okay, there's a, there's a very interesting story about the story of David and Goliath. And, and, you know, psychologists and so on have followed the biblical story. And they now can say that Goliath probably had a certain psych psychological issue where he couldn't see well. And David knew that, and so David stayed right out of his range of vision. And there's one passage in the Bible where it says, "Come near me, so I can see you," or something like that. Goliath says that, but David is staying right out of his range of vision, and has and has a chance to shoot his slingshot at the at this guy, and he knocks him cold, and then he cuts off his head. Well, you know, I used to play a lot of handball, mm -hmm. skip, and I noticed that when I was out coursing around in the mountains, just I grew up in Colorado, mm -hmm. that I would throw a rock out into the pond and I could hit a very small object mm -hmm. because my accuracy was so much heightened from, from handball. Mm -hmm. So I realized, and later on I learned that uh, shepherds used the stones mm -hmm. to keep the sheep in, in a narrow corridor so that mm -hmm. they don't stray. Right, right. They have to be accurate with the placement of those stones. Oh, absolutely. And then I realized that it wouldn't be that hard for someone like David mm -hmm. to land the stone right in a head-sized area. It's not sure. that hard. Sure. And they have a lot of a lot of power and strength behind them. Right, and especially if they're using a slingshot as he exactly. was. Right? So he was already very well practiced at placing the stone exactly where it Precisely. was. Precisely, knew how to do it. Yeah. yeah, and and so, um, you know, but the entire Israeli army behind David, you know, Saul, Solomon's army or whoever it was he was fighting for, um, because he was just a kid when that was happening, um, the whole army told him to run away because of this giant. Right, they were their psyches was were telling them to flight, and David was prepared to fight because he perceived something that they didn't perceive, and neither did the other enemy, and and so uh, they 
They probably had the warrior archetype for millions of years. Sure. Of development. And right. Yeah, because yeah, when you were a shepherd in those days, you were definitely a warrior, right? Because you had to protect your flock against predators and against brigands and all sorts of people, right? Things and people. So I think that what the psyche does is it tells you things, and then you have to decide whether it's right or not. So this is where you go beyond the duality, okay, into a level where you start to achieve wholeness. When you say right, though, it's um, opportunistic the way you're defining it, right? Because you're saying well, I mean, if I, it leads to your know. happiness, it's right. Well, that's what the Dalai Lama says. <laughs> what about the effect on other people who may be affected by that decision? Well, I mean, there there are always your own reactions to what they might think, and and so on. So, yeah, there everything has its consequences, right? You can't do anything. I mean, here here's two grown Americans sitting at a table, and we're recording what we're talking about, and you know, maybe 25 years from now someone sitting in Uzbekistan might hear something that we're saying and have an aha moment, okay, which will change their life. And it'll be after both of us are gone, but it'll still be on YouTube, okay. And, and so by some coincidence, so everything has its, its um, you know, its ripple effect, everything we do. Right. Everything we do has an effect on something. I mean, when you cut the grass, uh, how many creatures' livelihoods are you killing in that one grass cutting? You know, I cut the grass and all these creatures are bouncing up and bouncing out of the way. I have no idea how many I kill during one mowing of my front yard, which is very small. But I must. I must be killing some of those creatures. You know, everything you do has consequences. Just breathing. How does one determine what is right? And is that, is that a process that is a Jungian process or is it? I have the answer for you. I do have the answer for you on that. Is that the rule? Yes. The rule page. Right, the rule yeah, page. I've already gave it. By the rule page. Okay, well, I haven't been able to give it to anybody else, but you, I gave this to you. The rules of life, yeah, I, right? I, I was intrigued by it. So there are no rules. It left, it left me with a lot more questions than I did. What Dr. Young basically was saying is each one of us has to decide for ourselves.